What's up students? It's Nate here from the Reset Team. I'm so excited to be chilling with y'all tonight on this Wednesday evening as we get Reset Remote started. We're going to be diving into God's Word together. Hopefully you have a Bible. Hopefully you got something where you can be digging into the scriptures. If you're watching this on YouTube Live, we are so glad you are here with us. We have so much that we've been doing tonight, so much we've got planned even for Friday and for Sunday night as well. So I'm excited to kick this off with you guys here tonight. This whole series we're going to be doing is this idea of uh, processing a pandemic, right? How do we process a pandemic? There's this idea of, of what's going on in our world. There's so much that's being said about it. Everybody and their mother has an opinion on how to deal with this pandemic. But tonight, we're going to get started with this idea of our perspective in a pandemic, right? Tonight, what is your perspective? What's my perspective like? And really, how are we handling this from our own worldview, from our own eyes? Tonight, we're going to be looking at the story of a guy named Job. And this guy's name is so unique in and of itself is because it's spelled like the word job, right? Like J-O-B. If you've never heard of Job in the Bible, uh, he's got a really cool name and he's got also a really cool story. And so Job, if you read the book of Job, we're not going to read the whole thing. There's a lot of chapters in it. It takes a while to get through it. But in the book of Job... And we read in the very early parts that he was a very successful, wealthy, and just amazing person. The guy had a lot of kids. He had a huge family. He had a lot of friends. He had a lot of cash, did I mention? He had a lot of cows. It actually says that in the beginning of this. He had a lot of stuff. And really, the reason he had all that stuff was because God had blessed him with all of it. Now, imagine, right, we're, we're listening to this, we hear this, and a lot of us are like, Man, I really wish I was like Job. I wish I had all that stuff. I wish I had a lot of that stuff right now. I've been quarantined in my small bedroom. It's it's smaller than than most of our offices as pastors. You know, we have our own bedroom. Not Job. He had a lot of stuff and he had he had a lot to really play with too. He had a lot of toys. He had anything you could ask for. Job was a very blessed man. But that's not all at the beginning of the story. Satan saw how blessed Job was and Satan goes to God and he says, Hey God, what would happen if you allowed me to take all that stuff away from Job? Do you think he would still follow you, God? And Satan begins this ploy. He begins this, this plan really to try to get under Job's skin to see if I take it all away, if I ruin this guy's life right now, will he still follow you? God. And so we read early in Job that Satan goes and he takes all of it away. He kills a lot of his family members, all of his houses, all of his barns. Everything is burnt up. Everything is destroyed. And in chapter two of Job, it says that even in all of that, Job did not sin and he didn't blame God one time. Now, a lot of you, if that was you, you'd be really angry with God. And a lot of you find yourself angry at God right now. God, you've taken away my senior year. God, you've taken away prom. God, you've taken away this this sport that I, I can't play. You've taken away seeing my friends. And our perspective is on blaming God. We're we're going after God. Why are you doing this? And our perspective is really inward focused. Our perspective is all about us. And and that's not necessarily okay. See, Job then goes on this journey, and he goes on this path of of discovering really, God, what are you doing? What's going on here? And he even has friends in his life. Job has friends that begin to even point him to maybe even turn away from God. Maybe some of you during this time, you have friends that have been encouraging. And maybe some of you, you have friends that have been like the opposite of encouraging. And wherever you're at tonight, really, Job experienced it. He had friends, even his own wife, His own wife told him to curse God and die because life was so hard for Job. Everything he had known, everything that he had was torn away from him and everything changed. And even in that, Job is turning to God. And he had other people in his life that were pushing him and encouraging him to turn to God. We read in chapter 38 of Job, God says to him, now gird up your loins like a man. And you're like, what does gird up your loins? What in the world does that what in the world does that mean, right? Like what? And what God's saying is, yo, stand up, get ready. We're gonna have a conversation. And I'm gonna tell you really what this is all about. He says, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? 
Tell me if you have understanding. God sets the scene right away. He says, Job, where were you when I created the earth? You were nowhere, you were nowhere to be found. You weren't even created yet, Job, when I began to plan and build the foundation of the earth. You weren't there. You weren't with me when I created the earth. God's beginning to speak of his power. God is beginning to tell Job, hey, do you know who I am? Do you know that I'm in control? Do you know this? And then he continues down in verse 12. He says, have you ever in your life commanded the morning and caused the dawn to know its place? He said, Job, you've never asked the sun to rise. You've never told the moon where it should go. And God begins to show to Job verse by verse in chapters 38, 39, and 40. He tells him, I am in control. You need to change your perspective, Job. Yes, all this stuff is terrible that's happening. All this stuff that's going on in your life, it's it's miserable. No one should, should have to go through this, this terrible time, right? But God is reminding Job, I'm in control and I'm doing something bigger than you. See, the main point of all of this, as we be- begin this this the plan or, or how to process a pandemic, the first night is you and I, we need to change our perspective on God so we can discover what he's doing. We need to, we need to set back. And when we put our perspective on God, when we, we put our eyes on what he might be trying to teach us, we take our focus off of ourselves and we see, God, you might have a plan in this. God, I want to discover what you're doing. I want to see what you're trying to teach me. I want to see what are you trying to to bring out in me that might make me a stronger follower of you, that might build good attributes in me, that might help me grow my faith. Job changes his perspective here because he sees how strong and how awesome and how powerful God truly is. A lot of you, you need to do that tonight. You need to change your perspective and put it back on God. A lot of your perspectives, you've only been really looking at how this pandemic is affecting you. Instead, you need to see how this pandemic, what God might be doing in it. What could God be doing to teach you something, right? A perspective is always better when we get to look back on something, right? You know, hindsight, they say, is always 2020. And I never really knew what that meant until I got older. And for a lot of you teens who are watching, you're not going to understand this this pandemic, you're not going to really realize what God is doing until we get through it. And guess what? That's okay. This time is hard. This this thing that we're experiencing, it's very difficult. But when we change our perspective on what God could be doing, we can discover a whole new level of growth in our faith. This whole story wraps up in chapter 42. And in chapter 42, Job gets a chance to speak. Right? God has done some really cool stuff. God has shown Job, you know, Job, where were you when I created the earth? Where were you when I caused the sun to rise and the moon, the moon to come up at night? And in chapter 42, verse 1, it says, Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Now, what a fun word that is, thwarted, right? Job's stepping back, literally doing this. He's stepping back. And he's realizing that God's purpose through all of this trouble is going on, that God's doing something even greater than he could have imagined. For a lot of you here today, you're, you're watching and you're like, God, why are you allowing this pandemic? What's going on? You might not see it right now. You might not even see it in a week. You might not see it in two weeks. You might not see it in a month. But I need you to realize tonight that God is doing something huge. God could be trying to teach you something. God could be trying to teach you that community is important and that you were taking it for granted before. God could be trying to teach you that you might need to be in your your word and his word more. God might be trying to teach you that you need to be praying more. God might be trying to teach you that those things that you thought were so valuable really weren't so valuable. What is it? Instead of focusing on what God's taking away from you, focus on what God is trying to do in you. Change your perspective. And you will see how God can do amazing things in your faith. This is really cool. I love that we can do this. I love that we can be in God's word together. We have people who are watching from all over. We got people from Whitney Point watching. We have people from Windsor watching. There's people from Vestal, Johnson City, all over that are involved in this event. I love you guys. I'm so excited to be a part of this event. I will see you guys on 
Friday. Well, guys, this has been a wild adventure. There are 90 some people still in here, even though we've changed the video three times. So I need all of you to pat yourselves on the back. Somehow we are on the internet. I'm going to work with YouTube to figure out why we keep getting flagged. What is going on? It's not due to music. So we are learning what is going on. But how great was Nate's mes message? How practical was that? And let me actually uh, tell you, let me tell you something. So, um, Recently, this last weekend, uh, my wife and I, we decided it was time for us to do some home renovations because we're sitting at home all the time. And like, so we're just looking around, staring at all the stuff that we want to do. And one thing that we decided to do is we wanted to paint our bedroom, right? So we went to the store and we bought the paint. We went and we moved it in the house and we were ready to roll up our sleeves and get painting. But here's the thing. What if we just put the can of paint in the, in the living room and just watched it and just sat there and looked at it 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 wouldn't do anything it would be it would be silly it would be nonsense you see because with the can of paint the value is in the application you have to actually take it out of the can and put it on the wall you have to apply it in order to get the value from it and the same is true with the word of god it comes in application so there is so much value in actually applying what nature shared to your life because all of us have to have a perspective check right now because life has been challenging some of us lost our senior your year. Some of us aren't going to get to do our proms. Um, some of us are dealing with serious financial meltdowns in our family. It's not easy what many of us are facing. So we need to really take a look at our lives, be honest about what we are facing, and then apply the powerful message that Nate shared and the word of God to our situation. So that is why it is crucial that in this time we stay connected. So uh, that is why we want to help bring connection to you, which is why after this we are going to be doing some uh we're going to be doing some Zoom rooms. What that's going to be basically is an opportunity for you guys to plug in and have a discussion. We have two rooms available. Um, one of them is going to be the after party, just going to be games. John Schultz will be heading that up. Games, good time, giving away some prizes and things like that. But the other one is the debrief and discussion. Nate's going to be in there. Some leaders are going to be in there. And it's an opportunity for you to really unpack what God is teaching you and a chance to talk and get prayer and discuss uh, serious spiritual things. Guys, uh, if I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, this uh, this went very well. We are so happy that you guys jumped video to video to video. I could not be more happy to be part of Reset. Thank you so much. We are going to work this out and we are going to get this live again on Friday. That's night that I'm speaking, but you know what? It doesn't matter because we are a movement. We're not just a bunch of people watching a video. So I'm really happy to be a part of this movement. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get going in the Zoom rooms. The information is in the description. I will see you guys on Friday. Get in there and apply what God is teaching you.